Thank you, Genesis Gold Group, for sponsoring this video. Hello, YouTubers. Alaska Prepper here. I don't know if I'll be able to publish this video today, Wednesday uh, evening, uh, but if I don't, it'll be first thing Thursday morning. And this is something that we need to continue to talk about because this is going to change everyone's lives. Those of us that live here, especially in the United States and in other Western nations, our lives are going to change dramatically when this finally occurs, and it will occur. All right, ladies and gentlemen, understand that this is going to occur. What is that? The de-dollarization of the world. The world is tired of dollars. It's tired of how the government has used dollars as a weapon, and it is tired of having to rely on the monetary and financial or fiscal policies of this country to find out whether they're going to have to be paying a higher interest rate on loans or whether they're going to have to work more in order to pay back loans because of the strength of the dollar going up and down. Now they're saying, we've had enough. I want to do bilateral trading. Why can't I just trade with my neighbor across the border with our funds, with our currency, instead of having to depend on a currency that can either make us work harder or work less but we never really know you know like the dollar and that's exactly what this is about the dollar is going to be finished and what do I mean by that ladies and gentlemen some people think that I mean that the dollar reserve currency status of the world is just gonna go away I don't think that the reserve currency status of the US dollar is just gonna go away like this but the value of the US dollar is going to start to diminish at a faster rate than what we've been used to meaning what that is going to cause inflation here in the United States and in any countries which I think there's like nine countries whose official currency is the US dollar that that's what they use for trading their currency or any countries of course that are pegged to the dollar of course are also going to experience high inflation. I'm not a financial advisor, but the folks at Genesis Gold Group specialize in helping those who want to diversify their excess wealth by converting their fiat currency retirement plans into a plan that is backed by real money. So if you're in a position where you are wondering what you can do in order to diversify or insulate your wealth against what I like to call the inferno of inflation, give Genesis Gold Group a call and they can provide you with the information that you need in order to make an educated decision. Another blow to the petrodollar. India and the UAE complete first oil sale in rupees. And this is just oil. This is not other things that they've already been interacting with, with their own local currencies. In another blow to dollar dominance, India and the United Arab Emirates settled an oil trade without converting local currencies to dollars for the first time on Monday as India's top refiner made a payment for its oil in rupees. Now ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that may not understand how, how the economy works internationally, uh, before or starting in 1974, if a country wanted to buy oil from the OPEC nations, they had to use dollar bills, dollars, right? U.S. Federal Reserve notes. That made a demand for dollars around the world because a lot of countries purchase oil from the OPEC nations. So they needed dollars in order to purchase that oil. It was a deal that was made between Kissinger and whoever was the, the Princess Saudi at that time. And Kissinger, of course, if you remember, was under uh, President Nixon. It was a deal that was made after President Nixon had taken us off the gold standard because he pretty much got caught spending more money than what he could based on how much gold we had. So other countries started saying, hey, I want my gold back. I want my gold back at $35 an ounce like we like we said we would uh, do, you know, when, when you went on the gold standard back in uh, 1944, I think it was, right? So they called him out on it and he had to get us off the gold standard. Why? Because they didn't have the gold to cover all of the fiat currency that they had printed, right? Pretty much uh, the king had no clothes. So Kissinger went over to Saudi Arabia and said, hey, let's make this deal with you and the OPEC nations. Let's go ahead and make it to where they can only purchase oil in dollars. And what we will do for you, Saudi Arabia, is, is we will give you defense and we will sell you at a good price defensive weapons. Right. So we've had that deal with them 
all these years up until I believe it was 2021 or 2022. I think it was last year where Saudi Arabia said, hey, U.S., we really don't need that deal anymore. We'll still buy the weapons, but we're going to go ahead and do an arms uh, deal with uh, Russia, where now Russia will provide for them security and also sell them arms. So this is where it all started. I remember reporting on this. I don't know. I think it was a little over a year ago or so, if not two. But uh, this is where it all started, where we finally realized, oh, my goodness, if OPEC starts selling its oil in any other currency other than the dollar, then the dollar's dominance around the world is going to get smaller and smaller. Eventually, one day, it will lose its reserve currency status. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to lose value like a rock sinking in the ocean. Here they continue to say that Indian Oil Corps bought a million barrels of oil from Abu Dhabi National Oil Company in a dollar free transaction. The oil sale was the first after the two countries entered a memorandum of understanding in July. The deal established the local currency settlement LCS system facilitated by the Reserve Bank of India and the Central Bank of the UAE. The system allows for the two countries to engage in bilateral trade using the rupee and the dirham according to a statement by the Reserve Bank of India. The agreement will facilitate seamless cross-border transactions and payments and foster greater economic cooperation. Now my question to you is this, how easy is it for other countries to do the same thing that India and the UAE did? I would say that it is very simple because all that they have to do to transact in that monetary amount is just send each other whatever deficit they may have. So for example, let's say India purchases oil from UAE and UAE wants to purchase X number of gadgets from India because they do produce a lot of gadgets over there, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's say at the end of the year, if they don't want to be doing transactions all the time, they say at the end of the year or at the end of every month, they say, okay, what's our deficit and who has the deficit? All right, well, India, you bought a billion dollars worth of oil and we only bought, uh, let's say, $700 million worth of gadgets from you. That means that uh, you owe us, India, $300 million. And India would be like, okay, here you go. Let me send you the $300 million. And of course, I'm saying dollars, but obviously it's in their local currency, right? India sends them their 300 million rupees, let's say. And then the UAE takes those 300 million rupees and they put them in their reserves. That way they can have rupees whenever they need to buy something from India. And that's how it works, ladies and gentlemen. It's not very difficult. It's kind of like it's kind of like a, a very simple in and out log method. You know, you can do it on a piece of paper, really. The first test of the LCS involved the sale of 25 kilograms of gold from UAE gold exporter to a buyer in India at about 128.4 million rupees or 1.54 million dollars. So they've been doing this. I believe that this is going to be the way that countries go from now on, especially if a BRICS. Uh, currency is not developed. If a common BRICS currency is not developed and or countries that may have not been accepted into the BRICS yet are going to start doing bilateral trading more and more. India has also purchased oil from Russia using non-dollar currencies. India ranks as the third largest oil importer in the world. So what you have to think about that statement is that how many dollars are being taken out of the system or out of India's dollar reserves because now they just don't need those dollars being that they're the third largest oil importer in the world. That's what we have to think about ladies and gentlemen. That is what's going to bring down the value of the dollar. Is all of these banks around the world not needing to keep them in reserves. If the trend of the dollarless transactions expand to other countries, the minimization of the dollar in the global oil trade would have bad news for the United States. And I think that we understand why it's going to create inflation here and it's going to devastate our economies here. People are not or other countries are not going to want to borrow from the United States and it's going to make interest rates go up. It's just a big mess. As it stands, the majority of global oil sales are priced in dollars. This ensures a constant demand for the greenback since every country needs dollars to buy oil. 
This helps support the U.S. government's borrow and spend policies along with its massive deficits. As long as the world needs dollars for oil, it guarantees demand for greenbacks, i.e. dollars. That means that the Federal Reserve can keep printing dollars to monetize the debt no more. No more. This is going to stop and it is going to hurt, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we need to prepare in every way possible. Get those things that you know you're going to need for the next two, three, four, five years if you have somewhere to put them. If not, if you run out of room like me because I've already got 50,000 solar generators, then I'll take my excess wealth and I'll go ahead and put it into some gold and silver. All right, real money. Simply put, they say, de-dollarization would drastically diminish U.S. economic power and wreck the country's economy. And here's what I was talking about earlier. Saudi Arabia has sold oil exclusively for dollars since 1974 under a deal with the Nixon administration. If the Saudis shift away from the dollar and sell oil in other currencies, other countries will likely follow suit due to the country's influence on the global oil market. That is going to happen. Don't wait for that to happen and for you to find out that your dollars are now worth half of what they were worth yesterday before you protect yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. While the current de-dollarization trend doesn't directly threaten the dollar's role as the world reserve currency, yet it could foreshadow bigger problems down the road. And I believe that there are much bigger problems down the road than a name saying that, yeah, you're the reserve currency. Who cares if you're the reserve currency? What can I buy with you? That's what really matters, right? Uh, let's see. And they say that it is going to be these things that are going to happen that I bet is that the dollar's dominance will be eroded by encouraging smaller trading blocks to use their currencies instead. And that is what we're seeing right now. That's what this article is about. We're seeing other countries use something other than the dollar in order to do international trade. If the demand for dollars were to plunge significantly, interest rates on U.S. Treasury bonds would soar absolutely ladies and gentlemen this would be an unattainable situation for a government servicing more than 32 trillion dollars in debt meaning we wouldn't be able to service our debt the only way that we would be able to service our debt if interest rates went even higher than they are now like let's say like back in the 80s when interest rate went as high as i think it was 19 or 20 percent there's no possible way that we could service our debt absolutely not what would happen the government would probably try to print itself out of the situation and push us into hyperinflation. And here is a warning. Americans should be very wary of counting on long-term dollar dominance to prop up its house of cards economy. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we have, a house of cards economy. When you take a look at the United States, you take a look at a country that's keeping up with the Joneses, or maybe they are the Joneses, right? Maybe, maybe this country is the Joneses, but when you look deep into the Joneses' finances, you know, you know what I mean about the Joneses keeping up with your neighbors that have a nice SUV, a nice house, and all that kind of stuff. When you look deep into the Joneses' finances, you'll understand that that Mac mansion that they have, that that's really not theirs. That 95% of it belongs to the bank because they are so indebted in paying that off monthly on a 30-year mortgage. So the house isn't really theirs, but they live in a fancy house. They have a $100,000 SUV or truck or car, or whatever you want to imagine that they have, but they have a beautiful $100,000 vehicle, but that $100,000 vehicle is not theirs because they have barely no equity on it whatsoever, or more than likely, they're upside down on it. They wear the nicest clothes, they have nice jewelry. They're always eating out, going on vacations. But what we don't know is that they're doing that with credit cards. And they're barely being able to keep up with the payments on the credit cards on a monthly basis because they have this huge mortgage and car payments and all these other things that they have financed in their life. So you, sitting in a small house that's let's say one-fifth the size of the McMansion of the Joneses, you sitting in a small house driving a 10 or 15 year old vehicle, wearing just regular clothes that you replace when they get worn out. You own your home, but it's a really small home, very modest home. You own your vehicle, but it's really a very modest 10, 15 year old vehicle. And like I said, you don't dress to impress, but when you look at your financial situation and the financial situation of the Joneses, you are a lot wealthier than the Joneses are because you own what you have, which means you have equity in what you own and the Joneses don't. 
So when you take a look at the United States finances, ladies and gentlemen, right? when you take a look at our finances, our debt, uh, the fact that we could never, ever pay back our debt, we can never pay it back. The best we, we could do is service the interest on that debt. When you look at all of those things, we really are a bankrupt nation. All right, and some nations that pay as they go, like some of these third world countries, that they actually have to pay as they go because they don't have a choice. They live hand to mouth. They don't have a choice. From one day to day, they live one day to the other. Right? Those countries probably have a lot less debt per capita than we have. So who's better off? I don't know. Some people say, well, we're better off here because we've been exporting inflation to all these other countries and they've been sending us their gadgets for pieces of paper. But eventually, one day, that gig will be up. And that's why you need to prepare. Once again, thank you very much to our sponsor or to the sponsor of this video, Genesis Gold Group. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great rest of your day. God bless you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.